Now, it's the Rolls-Royce of toilets that's caused a big stink. Peter took a credit card payment for the luxurious loo, but soon found out the money had gone down the drain. This is the cause of all our problems. This is a toilet that does everything, even opens and shuts by itself. This is a story about a $5,000 toilet, a bank, and a retailer who says he's been ripped off. This is our most expensive toilet. It even comes with its own remote control. And to steal one of these things, what a crappy thing to do. Yes, you want to buy a toilet? Yeah, we'll need a deposit, a deposit of $2,000. Two months ago, Peter Vaughan's store in Ipswich, west of Brisbane, took a call from a customer wanting to buy this toilet they'd seen on the shop's website. We'll need a deposit, a deposit of $2,000. Yes, you pay by card, thank you. We ordered the toilet and it had to come from Melbourne, so it took three weeks. So this was a credit card transaction like you've done many times before? This I think most retail businesses do. Yes, we take the card, we get it authorised and then we proceed with the sale. Now you'd think if the credit card used to make the purchase had been stolen, it would have been reported in the three weeks it took for the toilet to arrive in Queensland. But it wasn't. In fact, the phone customer used the same credit card details to pay the balance when it did arrive. So we delivered the, as asked, we got it signed for, came back to the shop. And a month later, the bank contacts you. What do they say? The bank has informed us that the customer said it is a fraudulent transaction and they have told us they are going to take the money out of our account. Sure enough, in an email from Peter's bank, Westpac, it says the transaction has been raised as unauthorised by the cardholder. This is a fraud transaction. We don't know if the card was stolen. We don't know if Mrs Smith said to Mr Smith, look, I don't want the toilet. We just don't know. Worse still, Westpac tells Peter they'll be taking the cash to pay the customer back out of his business account. As per the rules of Visa and MasterCard, the liabilities do shift to the merchant when a transaction is raised as fraud or unauthorised on a card not present transaction. We've not only lost the money out of our bank account from the customer, we have lost the money we have paid the supplier to buy that toilet to give to the customer. So effectively, you've paid twice for this. We've lost not 5,000, 9,000. I got here at about 20 past seven to check on the business and um, it was lapping at the door already. It just come up so fast. Back in February, we were here when Peter's business partner, Troy McGuinness, watched the shop go under in a flood. The store was closed for six months and had only just reopened when the toilet fraud happened. It's a month's wages. Um, it, a month's sales doesn't carry that much profit. So you're angry with the bank? They have said they're taking out the money because we did not cite the card. Now, in my 20 years of retail, if we take an order over the phone or online, we never cite the card. So what the bank is telling me, that this is all fraudulent if the customer says so. In a statement, a spokesperson for Westpac says... It's important businesses take extra care when accepting card not present payments to reduce the risk of chargebacks or fraudulent purchases. And businesses should be wary of any customers who place multiple orders within a short space of time, use multiple credit cards to complete a purchase and request urgent shipping or delivery to a third party. In these types of circumstances, the liability generally does rest with the business owner. Criminologist, Associate Professor Cassandra Cross from Queensland's University of Technology, is an expert in consumer fraud. We know from statistics last year that there was over $452 million that was reported to this type of fraud, card not present fraud. So sadly, um, it's something that is quite common. I'm sorry, sir, due to new bank policy, I cannot take the card over the phone. I need to cite the card and you need to put the pin into the machine. 
You're probably wondering why Peter doesn't simply knock on the door of the person who has the toilet. Well, the trouble is he doesn't know where that person lives. The customer asked the store to drop it at a mate's place who turned out to live in a unit block on Brisbane's south side. And Peter says the only advice Westpac can give him, call the police. Even when we go to the police, who did this to you? We don't know. We don't know the name on the card. We do not know anything. If you're going to fraud something, why fraud a toilet? No, it doesn't make sense, does it? I wish I could say they bought the best on the market, but they tell me they stole the best on the market. It's a tough lesson. Peter has now reported the issue to police who have launched an investigation.